In this video, we will discuss dielectric properties of materials from module 5. The contents of this video are dielectric material, electric dipole and dipole moment, polar and non-polar dielectrics, electric polarization, static dielectric constant, types of polarization, temperature dependence of polarization mechanism, internal field, Clausius masotti relation, solid, liquid and gaseous dielectrics and application of dielectrics in transformers. Dielectric material. A dielectric material is an electrically non-conducting material. Examples are air, glass, wood, rubber, etc. If its main purpose is to provide insulation, it is called as insulating material. If it is employed for charge storage, then its name is dielectric. Unlike in the case of metals, there are no free electrons in dielectrics. In dielectrics, all the electrons are bound very strongly to the respective nuclei of the parent nuclei. Electric dipole and dipole moment. A pair of equal and opposite charges which are separated by a very small distance is called electric dipole. The product of magnitude of one of the charges and distance of their separation is called dipole moment. Consider two charges minus q and plus q with a distance of separation d which is assumed to be small. The dipole moment of the arrangement is mu is equal to q into d. Polar and non-polar dielectrics. A dielectric material does not have any free electrons. Each molecule in the material consists of equal number of positive and negative charges. In signed dielectric materials, effective center of the negative charge distribution coincides with the effective center of the positive charges, thus neutralizing each other's effect. Such materials are called non-polar dielectrics. But in some materials, effective centers of the positive and negative charges will not coincide with each other. They are separated by a small distance, constituting permanent dipole. Such materials are called polar dielectrics. Dipoles are oriented randomly in polar dielectrics. It results in a net zero dipole moment for the material as a whole. Electric polarization when the electric field is applied to the non-polar dielectrics, positive and negative charges of the various molecules in it experience pulling forces in opposite directions. Thus, the effective centers of positive and negative charges get separated by a small distance. Therefore, each molecule develops dipole in the direction of the applied field. When the electric field is applied to the polar dielectrics, Molecular dipoles tends to align their dipole moment in the direction of the applied electric field. Some alignment is achieved in relatively stronger field. The polarization of the dielectric is the process of formation of dipoles or alignment of already existing dipoles by the application of the electric field on the dielectric material or the polarization P of the dielectric material is the induced dipole moment per unit volume of the dielectric material. The ratio of induced dipole moment to the effective applied electric field is called polarizability alpha. Polarization is given by P is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon r minus 1 into E, where E is the applied electric field, epsilon r dielectric constant, epsilon naught permittivity of the free space. Static dielectric constant. The electric flux D in a material is related to electric field strength E in any point in space and the relation is given by D is equal to epsilon naught epsilon R into E where epsilon naught is equal to 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 farad per meter represents the permittivity of vacuum epsilon r the relative permittivity of the material further epsilon is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon r where epsilon is known as absolute permittivity of the material 
epsilon r which is a constant and dimensionless quantity is known as dielectric constant of the material. This is the measure of influence of electric field within a dielectric material. It depends on the structure of the atoms of which a material is composed of. The relative dielectric constant epsilon r is referred to as static dielectric constant or simply dielectric constant which is under static field conditions. Epsilon r has a value of unity for vacuum which is the lowest value it can possess. For air it is 1.0006. Epsilon r varies widely from material to material. For example, its value for pyrex glass is 5.6 and for water is 80. Similarly, epsilon r varies with the frequency of the voltage applied to the plates of the capacitor. Determination of static dielectric constant. One of the methods of measuring dielectric constant is to determine the capacitance of the capacitor with a vacuum or air and with the dielectric medium and to compare them. Take a parallel plate capacitor. The capacitance of the capacitor is measured using air as the medium. If CR is the capacitance of the capacitor in air, then CR is equal to A into epsilon naught divided by D, where A is the area of the plates of the capacitor, D is the distance between the plates of the capacitor. The capacitance is determined with a material whose dielectric measurement is to be carried out. If Cm is the capacitance of the capacitor with the dielectric medium with the dielectric constant epsilon r, then Cm is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r a divided by d. Then Cm divided by C r is equal to epsilon r, taking the ratio of this equation and this equation. Types of polarizations. There are three different mechanisms through which electrical polarization can occur in the dielectric materials when they are subjected to the electric field. They are first one, the electronic polarization. The atom can be considered to be made up of a point positive charge that is nucleus surrounded by a negative electron cloud. In the absence of the applied electric field, center of the electron cloud coincides with the center of the positive charge. So, electric field is zero in this diagram. So, this positive charge represents the nucleus and this negative charge represents the electron cloud. The center of these negative charges and this positive charge coincides with each other in the absence of the electric field. When an electric field is applied, nucleus and the electron cloud tries to move in opposite directions. The nucleus moves in the direction of the field and the electron cloud in the direction opposite to the applied field. The separation created between the charges leads to the development of an induced dipole moment. The polarization produced here is called electronic polarization. So in this diagram, field is greater than zero and the field is in this direction, the arrow mark indicates the direction of the field. So, in the presence of the field, the positive charge moves in a direction of the field and negative charges in a opposite direction. Hence, the center of these negative charges and center of this positive charge separated by a small distance which constitutes a dipole moment. Electronic polarizability is denoted by alpha E. The rare gas atom alpha E is given by alpha E is equal to epsilon R into epsilon naught minus 1 divided by N where N is the number of atoms per unit volume. Second one, ionic polarization. This polarization mechanism occurs only in those dielectric materials which possess ionic bonds such as in sodium chloride. In an ionic material, there will be an arrangement of positive and negative ions. If their arrangement is symmetrical, there will be no permanent dipole present. When ionic solids are subjected to the external electric field, the positive ions move in the direction of the applied electric field. 
and negative ions in the opposite direction. The displacement causes an increase or decrease in the distance of separation between the atoms depending upon the location of the ion pair in the lattice. This results in a net induced dipole moment. The ionic polarizability measures the shift of the ions relative to each other. Here this is when the field is absent that is E equal to 0. So the ions of the material positive and negative ions are arranged like this. So when we applied an electric field in this direction, positive ions are moving in the direction of the field and negative directions are in the opposite direction. Hence the positive and negative charges are separated by a small distance and dipoles are exist. Third one, orientational polarization. Orientational polarization occurs in those dielectric materials which possess molecules with permanent dipole moment that is the dielectric material is polar dielectric materials. They are normally randomly oriented due to thermal agitation. Because of randomness in the orientation, the material has net zero dipole moment. When an external field is applied, each of the dipoles undergo rotation so as to reorient along the direction of the field. The orientation of these dipoles leads to polarization. This polarization is known as orientational polarization. The polarizability of this type is found to be proportional to square of the dipole moment P and inversely proportional to T, that of the region. The orientational polarizability is given by alpha naught is equal to mu square divided by 3 k into t. Here, so this is when the field is 0. In the absence of the field, the dipoles are oriented randomly. So, in the presence of the field, these randomly oriented dipoles orient in a direction of the applied field. Temperature dependence of polarization mechanisms. When a material is subjected to ordinary conditions of increasing the temperature, the electronic distribution in the constituent molecules hardly get affected. Hence, there will be no influence of the electronic and ionic polarization mechanisms. However, the effect of increase in the temperature brings about a high degree of randomness in the molecular orientation in the material. This will adversely affect the order lines in the dipolar arrangement that was established by the applied field, which in turn affects the orientational polarization. The orientational polarization varies inversely as the temperature. Hence, thermal energy facilitates the ion movement by diffusion. It aids the molecule to align in the direction of the field. Internal field in liquid and solid dielectrics. When a dielectric material, either solid or liquid, is subjected to an external electric field, each of the atoms develops a dipole moment and acts as electric dipole. Hence, the resultant field at any given atom is the sum of the applied electric field and the electric field due to the surrounding dipoles. This resultant local field is called internal field. The internal field or local field is the electric field that acts at the site of the given atom of a solid or liquid dielectric subjected to an external electric field and is the resultant of the applied electric field and the field due to all the surrounding dipoles. Expression for internal field in the case of liquid or solid dielectrics that is in one dimensional case. Consider a dielectric material either liquid or solid kept in an external uniform electric field of strength E. In the material let us consider an array of equidistant atomic dipoles arranged parallel to the direction of the field. So these 
atoms C1, B1, A1, X, A2, B2, C2, etc. are the uh, an array of equidistant atoms which are the atomic dipoles and the distance between the successive atoms is D and E is the applied field in this direction. Let the interatomic distance be D and the dipole moment of the atomic dipole is mu. Consider an atom X, this one, the total field at X which is the internal field EI is the sum of the applied field E and the field due to all the dipoles that is E dash. Field due to the remaining dipoles is represented by E dash. Then EI is equal to E plus E dash. So this is from the definition of the internal field which can be written as E plus 1.2 mu divided by pi epsilon naught into d cube. So this term 1.2 mu divided by pi epsilon naught d cube is equal to E dash that is the field due to the remaining dipoles. If alpha E is the electronic polarizability for the dipoles then we can write mu is equal to alpha E into EI. Therefore, so this is the previous equation. Here substitute for mu from this equation we get EI is equal to E plus 1.2 alpha E into EI divided by pi epsilon naught d cube or EI is equal to E divided by 1 minus 1.2 alpha E divided by pi d cube epsilon naught. So this equation is obtained by rearranging this equation. This is the expression for the internal field in case of one dimensional array of atoms in dielectric solids or liquids. In the above equation, since alpha E, E and epsilon naught and D are all positive quantities, EI is greater than E. Therefore, internal field is more than the actual field. The internal field increases with decrease in D and increase in alpha. That is D is present in here and alpha is present here because of that. For three dimensional cases, expression for internal field EI is equal to E plus gamma by epsilon naught into P where P is the dipole moment per unit volume for the material and gamma is the proportionality constant called internal field constant. In the case of cubic lattice, it can be shown that gamma is equal to 1 by 3 and the internal field is named as Lorentz field. That is E Lorentz is equal to E plus P divided by 3 epsilon naught. So, this equation is obtained by substituting for gamma in this equation here. Gamma is equal to 1 by 3 and this equation is known as Lorentz equation. Next, Clausius mazzotti relation. Elemental solids are those containing only one kind of atoms and the polarization is essentially due to the electronic polarizability of the atoms. Consider an elemental solid dielectric material of dielectric constant epsilon r. If n is the number of atoms per unit volume of the material, mu the atomic dipole moment, then we have dipole moment per unit volume is equal to n into mu. Mark this as equation 1. Here, the field experienced by the atom is the internal field EI. Hence, if alpha E is the electronic polarizability of the atoms, we can write the equation for mu that is as mu is equal to alpha E into EI. Substituting this mu is equal to alpha E into EI in equation 1 in this equation, 
we can write dipole moment per unit volume is equal to n into alpha e into ei and mark this as equation 2. Dipole moment per unit volume is the same as polarization P. Hence, we can write P is equal to N into alpha E into E. Or we can write EI is equal to P divided by N into alpha E. Mark this as equation 3. But we have the relation for P as P is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon R minus 1 into E where E is the applied field. From this equation, we can write E is equal to P divided by epsilon naught into epsilon R minus 1. This is equation 4. So, this is obtained by rearranging the terms in this equation. Also, we have the equation for the internal field as EI is equal to E plus gamma by epsilon naught into P. Mark as equation 5 where gamma is the internal field constant. Substituting for E, I and E from equation 3 and 4. So, equation 3 is expression for E, I. Equation 4 is expression for E. Substituting these two equations in equation 5, we get P divided by N into alpha E equal to P divided by epsilon naught into epsilon R minus 1 plus gamma P divided by epsilon naught. So, in this equation, P is common in all the terms. Hence, we can write 1 by n into epsilon E is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into 1 by epsilon R minus 1 plus gamma. Considering the internal field in the material to be Lorentz field, we have gamma equal to 1 by 3. Substituting this in the above equation, that is in this equation, we get 1 by n into alpha e is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into 1 by epsilon r minus 1 plus 1 by 3. So, this 1 by 3 is for this gamma or which is, is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into 3 plus epsilon r minus 1 divided by 3 into epsilon r minus 1 taking the LCM of these two terms or we can write epsilon naught divided by n into alpha e which is, is equal to epsilon r plus 2 divided by 3 into epsilon r minus 1. So, taking this epsilon naught to LHS this side. So, we are getting this equation. By rearranging this equation, we can write epsilon r minus 1 divided by epsilon r plus 2 is equal to n into alpha e divided by 3 into epsilon naught. So, first to bring this 3 to this side. So, this becomes 3 epsilon naught divided by n into alpha e. Then, taking the reciprocal of the whole equation, we are getting this equation. This equation is called clausius masotti equation and it holds good for crystal of high degree of symmetry. This equation provides a relation between epsilon r, the dielectric constant, which is a macroscopically measurable quantity and alpha e, electronic polarizability, which is an atomic property. So, this equation relates macroscopic property with the atomic property of the material. Solid, liquid and gaseous dielectrics. Electrical machines and appliances are designed by using appropriate dielectric materials suitable for their working so that they will have long life, reliability and trouble free working abilities. Such dielectric materials are broadly classified into solid, liquid and gaseous type. Solid dielectric material examples mica, porcelain, glass, synthetic materials like plastic etc. are inorganic dielectrics whereas Cloth, rubber, paper, etc. are organic dielectrics. Paper is hygroscopic, hence it is dried and impregnated with mineral oil or vegetable oils. High density papers are preferred in DC and energy storage capacitors. Liquid dielectric material. 
Mainly, liquid dielectric materials are used in transformers, switches, circuit breakers, etc. During the working conditions, the windings in an electrical device get heated due to eddy heating and zone heating. Liquid dielectrics allow the winding to cool faster by conveying the heat efficiently to the surroundings. Examples are transformer oils, silicon fluids, ascaridals, that is chlorinated hydrocarbons, viscous vaseline, fluoroorganic fluids, etc. Gaseous dielectric material. Gases are good dielectrics and work well as heat transferring medium. Examples are air, nitrogen, inert gases, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, etc. Vacuum is also considered under this category. It is a general observation that air provides insulation between the overheated, overhead transmission power line without any cost. Pressure has a decided effect on the dielectric strength of all gases. Higher pressure reduces its ability to insulate. Application of dielectrics in transformers. A transformer consists of two insulated conducting coils wound on a core. The core is also insulated. In case of high voltage transformers, further insulation is required which is to be provided between individual windings in the coils and also between the core and the coils. The insulation is provided by using paper, mica or cloth. The paper is impregnated with the varnish or wax to fill the air gaps. If there are air gaps, since the permittivity of air is less, ionization of air occurs at high voltage leading to excessive heating which damages the insulation. This effect is called corona. Mica is used to guard against corona. When the operating voltage cross 3 kV and up, a kind of oil called transformer oil is used. It is based on mineral oil. This oil also helps to keep the transformer cool. Few questions from these discussions. First one. Describe polar and non-polar dielectrics. Second, discuss dielectric constant of a material. Third, explain the phenomenon of electric polarization in dielectric materials. Fourth, explain various types of polarization mechanisms. Fifth, define internal field in case of solid dielectrics and derive clausius masotti equation. Sixth, describe solid liquid and gaseous dielectrics with one example each. Seventh, give the qualitative explanation of application of dielectrics in transformers. Thank you.